Welcome to the Nobody Guide to Life, where we provide tips and tools for personal growth, personal development, and your spiritual journey that you can use right now in your everyday life. I'm J.A. Plosker. Thank you for joining us. Find out more at nobodysview.com or the nobodybible.com, or you can check us out at Twitter and Facebook at Nobody's View, or you can join our Facebook community, Simple Spirituality. If you like what you hear, we'd welcome a subscription or a review. We'd appreciate it. I've been thinking about thoughts lately. Thinking and thinking about thoughts. This excessive thinking about the topic of thoughts comes as I'm trying to recommit myself to the principles of mindfulness, learning more about them, practicing them, investigating their roots. They come as I've been trying to carve more and more time out of my day for the practice of meditation because it's that important. And we've talked about it before. Two minutes, three minutes, even a few seconds. It's just that important. So what brought on this, well, this thought thinking? I become very, very aware of how my mind wanders when I'm meditating. Now, many of you know that this is a topic we've explored before on this show, but that's the thing about meditation. We're forced to confront this issue of thinking, of distraction, every time we settle in for meditation. If I have regular meditators out there, no doubt you know this. So I think I've shared with you the first technique for meditation I ever received. And it was from a teacher of mine before he was my teacher. So I guess you could say even before I considered him my teacher. So I, maybe this was the very first teaching. He said something like, sit and focus on something like the wall or the carpet or close your eyes and focus on the blackness behind your eyelids. Pretend that's your job in the moment. Just focusing on that thing. Whenever your mind wanders from that point, gently bring it back. Now, I'm paraphrasing what was a very important moment in my, in my life, but, but you get the idea. So pretty simple, right? Well, yes, in theory. But just like so many things on this road to personal growth and the spiritual journey, in practice, well, things look a bit different. Now, my teacher certainly wasn't the originator of, of this method, of this idea. If you Google mindfulness or mindful meditation, you'll be taken to all kinds of websites and articles. You'll see many of the same names pop up over and over. I'm sure many of you know John Kabat-Zinn. Uh, many credit him with bringing this concept of mindful meditation to the U.S. back in the 70s. But before Kabat-Zinn, countless others practiced it. And it has roots way back in the beliefs of the practices of Hindus and Buddhists, and even in Western traditions as well. So that's the interesting thing here. When you, when you practice this simple tool of mindful meditation, you're tapping into an ancient history, an art form. It's one of the oldest tools for bringing a little more calm, a little more peace. It doesn't matter if you practice for a few minutes, a few days, a few lifetimes, just being in the company of others in this tradition is pretty exciting and I think very rewarding. Now, I've been practicing that simple technique I just told you about for over two decades. And at times, it's really a struggle. You, you know, you go in and out of practice, you go in and out of the discipline, and it can be really, really hard. I, I spend a lot of time pep talking myself about it, telling myself that the key to meditation isn't for something to happen or not happen. It's simply to be present for the event of meditation. Now with that in mind, and after a particularly challenging meditation session, I decided to pen a blog post over at Nobody's View called Four Steps to Mindful Meditation When You Can't Stop Thinking. The link is in our show notes, but let me, let me summarize it here. You already know you're busy. I already know I'm busy. I know you get busy, you know I get busy. You get distracted, I get distracted, the planet gets distracted. There's so much to do, so much to think about. So it really is hard to sit quietly, right? That's, that's a recurring theme around this podcast about the difficulty of finding that time. So here's the thing. If you sit down to meditate with the idea that you'll be able to stop your thoughts, well, in a lot of ways, that's, that's like expecting to go into a grocery store with a toddler and expecting them to not run around or pull things off the shelves. Some days are better than others, but there's always that looming specter of a tantrum somewhere hanging around. So you learn to accommodate. 
you learn to adjust, you learn to, to accept. So when you meditate, your mind may want to bounce off the walls like a toddler in a toy store. Now that doesn't look anything like the gurus you see sitting so serenely in their toddler free ashrams in the movies and so many years of practice and so much discipline, you know, it doesn't look anything like that. So what can you do? I mean, are you doing it wrong? Are these thoughts, I mean, is that a sign that you're meditating wrong? No, absolutely not. In fact, it could mean just the opposite. Understand that your thoughts belong to you. So they'll come to visit you. So we have to meditate with them. You know, we, we don't always get to choose when we have visitors. So here are four steps that I've laid out when I do my simple meditation practice. Now, remember, I didn't make these up. I'm simply, I'm simply laying out what I do, something that taps into a history much bigger than one guy hosting a podcast in 2018. If these steps, as you hear them, if they work for you, it's great. If not, that's great too. There's so much out there to explore, and I'm sure you'll find what resonates for you. But here we go. So step one, sit. So in whatever location seems best to you, sit. If you want to lie down, lie down. Now, I try for a quiet space, you know, sitting on the floor with my back straight, but you do what works for you. Step two, relax. So that's right. Just relax into your posture. Step three, focus on breath. So feel the rhythm of the breath. Just let it happen. Focus on breath doesn't mean contort your breath to make it do this or that. Just let it happen. Hopefully it happens all day for you, so just notice it now. And step four, refocus on the breath until the end of the session. Now pay attention to that step four. I, I said refocus. Okay, I didn't say banish thoughts from your mind. Now there's an understood step, we'll, we'll call it step 3.5, which is get distracted. Okay, I didn't build it into my four step program, but we can assume that it's there. When you sit and focus on something, anything, a mantra, a sound, the darkness behind your eyes, your breath, a Big Bang Theory rerun, whatever it is that you're focusing on in the moment, you know thoughts come. Okay, they dance, they play, they sing, they order pizza, they sit on your couch and put their filthy shoes on your ottoman. They're just there. But remember, refocus. Step four, refocus. Don't try to block them or chase them out with a broom. Just notice and refocus. Now, if you're a parent, you give up the idea that your kids will always cooperate with you. You, you accept that you, you have to accommodate them, you know, out of love for, for this creation. And it's the same with thoughts. So you created them. So you really need to respect them. One of the things that I've been thinking about lately is the idea that thoughts don't make meditation easy. What thoughts do is they make meditation necessary. In a lot of ways, distractions are reminders of the need to meditate. I'm sure we all know someone who says, I can't meditate. When I sit down to meditate, I'm too frazzled. My thoughts go everywhere. I can't meditate. Well, of course, we know that the great irony of that is that's exactly who this tool was developed for. That's you. That's me. That's that friend we were just talking about. Thoughts are part of sitting down to meditate. If you wait until your mind is clear before you ever decide to start meditating, you're going to spend your life waiting to meditate. So mindfulness, meditation, all these tools that we're hearing about today, these tools that are getting so much play on the internet, on the news, so many studies being done about them, they're not about getting away from thoughts. They're not about escaping our lives. They're not about going somewhere else. They're about being right here with our thoughts, with those distractions. They're about being present with them, still with them, and still with them. So follow those four steps over and over and over. Sit, relax, focus on your breath, refocus on the breath. Practice that over and over and over and over and over again. Follow those four steps if you think they work for you. And someday you, like me, will still be struggling with your thoughts. But at least at the end of the day, or for me at the end of the session, I'm aware of the struggle. 
And I think that adds something very valuable, at least to my practice. So hopefully that works for you. So that brings us to the end of this episode of the Nobody Guide to Life. Let me know what you're up to out there. If you'd like, you can join our Simple Spirituality group on Facebook and put something into the conversation. I'd love to hear about it. And remember, you can always find out more about what we're doing at nobodysview.com or thenobodybible.com, or you can reach out to us on Twitter and Facebook at Nobody's View. If you like what you hear on this podcast, please consider a review or a subscription. We'd really appreciate it. Keep practicing and have a good week.